Det är en stor ära att få presentera Nobelpristagaren i fysiologi eller medicin. It is a great honor to introduce the Nobel laureate in physiology or medicine, Professor William C. Campbell. My name is, is Bill Campbell, and I was uh, fortunate enough to have a Fulbright travel grant in 1952 for the year 1953. Um, and it was to study uh, at the University of Wisconsin. Well, getting to the United States was a challenge. It was certainly and a time of great excitement for me personally, but also a time of some apprehension. Um, for one thing, one went to New York and that just sounded like a daunting experience to arrive in New York when you have grown up in County Donegal in Ireland, <laughs> in a rural town, a small rural town. Um, so, on the other hand, crossing the ocean on a liner would be in itself an adventure, and that was something to look forward to. I had no idea where Wisconsin was when I first was approached about this, but I had looked at maps. Going to Wisconsin, or just being in America and being in Wisconsin, was um, a huge change for me in the sense of just everyday life. For one thing, I arrived in January and it was so cold that I couldn't walk down the street in the first few days because my face would hurt so much. And there's so many ways it was different, not only sort of in physical terms, such as the climate, but also in dealing with people because um, I was, uh, shy and um, I had had older brothers who had kept me in my place so I certainly wasn't big on self-esteem um, but I found that people were friendly and that I was somewhat different um, not maybe exotic but different I was the only well for a while there was another Irish student there, although I never met him from Northern Ireland, but for the most part, most of the years that I was at the University of Wisconsin, I was the only Irish person there. So I was uh, a certain, I provided a certain uh, curiosity. <laughs> As to my work, um, that was uh, again, a big change. For one thing, the educational systems had been, were, were very different. Um, and I came from a, a culture where uh, students, university students specialized. Um, and, and we sort of um, disparaged sort of American education because we knew nothing about it. And the other part of it was that because it, I had a joint major in zoology and veterinary science, the, my interest in parasites had been um, stimulated um, at Trinity College by this professor. But being in the Department of Veterinary Sciences, it, uh, I effect was um, not prepared as well as I thought, because um, parasites of domestic animals are um, in some ways different from those in humans. And so it was a very broadening experience professionally and a wonderful one because I realized in retrospect how fortunate I was because I was in a field where I could have an interface eventually throughout my whole career in both veterinary medicine and human medicine. Professor Tu, Professor Onura and I come from different lands. We speak with different tongues, but we are one in our gratitude. 
Actually, we have something else in common. All three of us have, one way or another, been connected with the world of parasites. Professor Tu and Professor Murrow work with very important parasites, but they are very small. <laughs> I like something bigger. <laughs> Parasitic worms are a decent size. <laughs> worms are something you can really get your teeth into. <laughs> the, the work that I did that um, this is sort of the most high-profile work, is the work that led to a Nobel Prize in medicine. Um, and that was awarded to myself and Professor Omura of Japan um, for work in discovering new medicines for the treatment of worm parasite infections. Um, in particular, worms, uh, roundworms or nematodes that cause disease in people and other animals. Now, the most high profile part of the Nobel Prize award had to do with river blindness in humans, which is caused by worm parasite. It's a long story, but the result now is that in Central and South America, it's, it's certainly a, a disease of the past. It has been officially declared eliminated in four of the six countries in which it's endemic. And in the two remaining ones, it is no longer a public health problem. The international uh, aspect of student exchange is, to my mind, as important as anything can be because it not only it makes the world smaller, more compact, and I think happier, um, but it also results in advances in culture, advances in science, in other words, advances in, in civilization. Um, so it's a great combination of um, enabling people of different countries and different cultures to understand each other and at the same time do good. So again, I think it's just a wonderful, a wonderful thing. It has certainly changed my life, um, not only in terms of, of career, but in terms of of, well, I'd like to think of it as growth. I mean, certainly of change and of being uh, less introspective and less um, inward or less timid. Uh, certainly made a huge difference. Well, for people who are thinking of applying for some sort of international study program, I would say that don't dismiss it hurriedly if you're inclined to dismiss it. In other words, persist in looking into it um, because you probably are going to initially underestimate what it will mean to you and it, it will turn out to mean much more.